Patty Brady received her Bachelor of Fine Arts from the San Francisco Art Institute. Patty has won several awards for her work, and her prints and hand-painted books have been exhibited nationally and can be found in public and private collections. Patty is currently the Working Artist Program Director for Golden Artist Colors, and she lectures and teaches the use of golden acrylics at a number of universities, art schools, and art events around the globe. For more information on Patty, visit her website at pattybrady.com. In this video workshop, Patty will show you several different ways of creating an encaustic look without wax. These techniques will allow you to expand your painting process to include additional layers of interest as you use acrylic gels and paints to create luster, depth, and rich color. What you also need to remember is that when they draw, if, especially if you're using yellow, you're making these a kind of yellow beeswaxy color, that what they go over is it's going to change what's underneath. So these are all dry, and I'm going to just, we can compare them. Here's the uh, pourable without any color except some of that interference. And you can see that it is pourable and it spreads out very thinly. Now I'm going to use the butter soft one. You can see that has more of a little thicker viscosity that's more yogurt like and then let's use the very stiff one and I like the stiff one because you can create a lot of texture by drawing it back and forth We're going to explore a technique that's um, very typical to both acrylic and encaustic. Um, with encaustic, you can carve back into that surface when it's um, set, um, and then you fill up those little carved holes with uh, more encaustic. With acrylic, we can't really carve it when it's dry, but we can carve it when it's wet and then squeegee color in. So let me show you um, kind of a really basic uh, way to um, play with this idea. Um, I'm using a gator board today for these samples that I'm that I'm making, but I don't really use this at home or in my studio. I use the ampersand cradle panels with gesso. Um, these are not necessarily a really good archival product for for making artwork. So I've got a nice beautiful Naples yellow imprimatura or toned underground um, underpainting here and I did that with the fluids. Um, I'm going to use that high solid gel mat because this is the stiffest gel and it dries, it actually shrinks a little less than other gels because it, um, it's, it has high level of solids, meaning a little less water. So it's a good choice for this technique. I'm going to use um, fluid chromium oxide green. I really like this color. I use this a lot in the studio to sort of knock back some of those really bright colors. I used to think it was um, way too much of an army fatigue green, but it turns out to be a very useful pigment to use. So you can see this is, this is stiff. We used this earlier in that stiff version of the acrylic encaustic top coat. And I'm going to apply this. Might not have mixed up enough, but that's OK, because I have I'm going to apply this very th thickly, and we'll just use this as a sample board. And 
I'm going to use these uh, color shapers. These are those sort of uh, rubber, some people call them rubber, rubber brushes, but they're great for carving into wet gel. And I'm going to carve in these little, I call them buggy shapes, and I'm pulling the gel away to reveal the color underneath. That's why the color underneath is important. And once you play with this a little bit, you start in your mind choosing the colors that you want to play against. You notice that I'm also wiping off the residue onto a paper towel because otherwise it just you sort of start dragging this around. So let me move this one aside and we'll go to our dry sample. There, my little buggy shapes. Now, obviously, um, when you're working with some of these uh, matte gels or clear gels, and they're white when wet and clear when dry, you don't always know how they're going to dry. So if you really want to figure this out ahead of time and not take chances, which I think you should take some chances because it's a lot more fun, but here's a, I, I want to use this quinacridone magenta, this really beautiful color, and I want to have a better idea of how much, um, how many drops of color I should add. So I made a chart, um, and I did two, four, six drops. And just this way I can tell uh, maybe this one is too rich or maybe this is just what I want. So you can make these, mix these colors up ahead of time, and then you use your hair dryer, dry it up, and then you'll have a better idea of how it's going to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that color up. Um, I'm going to use the heavy gel matte. I'm going to look at my chart and I'm going to say, ah, two drops. That's all I want for this one. Now, you could change up these, the shapes. You know, I could do stripes, squares. You could draw objects. I'm really kind of using the same shape just because it's simple. And I don't really have to think about it. <laughs> One more layer. I'm going to be very minimal with this one and not add it. I'm going to leave a lot of that green showing around the edges. And let's take a look at the dry one. It's just incredibly beautiful so rich and it the depth even though it's probably only you know less than a quarter of an inch actually it feels like it's very deep like it's it's really layered and your eyes move down through this so it's really creating that um, sort of encaustic look but without trying to make it look like wax what we're really doing is playing with what acrylic can do, the possibilities of acrylic.